Hi, Desi here with a stress buster for you. And today you're gonna get part two of my interview with Dr. Earl Henslin, who wrote the book, This Is Your Brain on Joy. And today he's gonna talk to you about how nutrition affects your brain. So you're gonna enjoy this. My name is Desi and I'm the Attitude Adjuster. Some good nutrition for our brains so that that will um, in, in return help us in the workplace. In the workplace what optimizes brain function would be higher protein and only healthy carbs you know uh, and but a little bit more protein than the carbs you know mm -hmm. so you know vegetables and things like that like you know, I have some people like mid morning or mid afternoon when blood sugar is dropping out. They really don't need coffee. What they need is something that's going to boost their blood sugar. So if they have a slice of cheese and a little slice of fruit together, that's probably going to wake up the brain enough, you know, uh -huh. to go on in, uh, till noon and then mid afternoon, same kind of phenomena. Uh -huh. Well, but you like. Day, you like coffee, so tell every all the coffee drinkers the benefits and non-benefits of drinking coffee. Yeah. One cup of coffee a day is no big deal. That's about 250 milligrams of caffeine in one cup of coffee. As long as that cup of coffee is not a 32-ounce cup. Because you know, I would tell people, you know, I only use use one cup of coffee a day but i wasn't telling him it was a big cup you know so now it's it's a much smaller one because actually uh caffeine too much caffeine has the same impact on the brain like weed does it actually constricts blood flow and it makes the brain look older you know mm -hmm. uh, a little caffeine you know does wake up the brain you can't deny that uh but but too much is just not good. It's like that principle of moderation and everything mm -hmm. uh, is really the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, except I wouldn't say moderation in cannabis. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's true. <laughs> I, what about I would the apply benefits? it to that, but, uh, but you know, and maybe in time, maybe the research will show something different. But so far, what we see, and that's what's kind of a little bit strange, is to have my 86 year old mother's brain scan looked younger. Hmm. than some of these people we've scanned like in their 20s. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. How, how, what about um, the benefit of water? Because I have a note on my desk to remind me to get up and drink water. So how does water affect the brain and, of course, then the pro their productivity on the job? Yeah. See, the brain uses 30% of all the calories we take in during the day. So that's why everything you eat, everything you drink, does have an influence on the brain. Uh -huh. And much of the brain is water. And so when you are having that good intake of water, eight, 10 glasses a day, well, that's optimizing brain activity. And, and there's also a system in the brain we're just starting to find out about is called uh, azercites. And that's like the kidney and liver of the brain. It's like helps detox the brain. And one of the ways that system gets flushed out is just simply water. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or like when we have a, a good workout and we actually sweat, you know, that helps get rid of that stress hormone cortisol. But it's also helping to get rid of toxins in the brain as well. Uh -huh. So if we don't drink enough water, it's, it's going to impact that... Uh, filtration system in the brain and mm -hmm. you know, things like fish oil uh, you know one to two grams or three or four grams per day really helps with overall brain health you know mm -hmm. uh, like when people get an annual physical now I encourage them to ask because now you can get a blood test to see what your omega-3 levels are mm. and uh, and as we are you know, at the time we're talking about this right now, it's winter, you know, in many parts of the country. And that's why everybody, when they go see their doctor, should get a vitamin D blood level. Because huh. uh, vitamin D is actually, D3 is actually a hormone. And it used to be 
that if you got 15 minutes of sunlight a day, that was enough vitamin D for the day. But the problem is we don't know why. Something's changed in our environment or in nutrition, but even people who work outside all day long mm -hmm. have low vitamin D levels. So now mm. uh, we have people uh, make sure they get a vitamin D blood level to make sure they're you know, in average or above average levels because see vitamin D affects cognitive processing, meaning how quick we think. Hmm. It influences multitasking, how many different bits of information we could be holding at one time. Mm -hmm. And then if vitamin D is dropped out, a, a person will naturally be depressed. You know? mm -hmm. Hmm. And so, uh, so omega-3 fatty acids, is a, uh, you can actually now ask your doctor to find out draw that blood level and you can actually tell whether or not you have enough fish oil or uh, vitamin d is a, another good basic one that doctors are actually starting to test more and more uh, at an annual physical mm -hmm. uh, but those basic things so you know good nutrition and and one of the best things for brain health uh, see the, is the fact that the brain gets replenished with oxygen basically two ways uh, a good night's sleep and exercise. Huh. And that's why, you know, like say, if you or your spouse snores or they get that <laughs> kind of stops breathing for a moment, rush them off to the primary care doctor and ask them to do a sleep study to find out if they have sleep apnea. Because uh -huh. untreated sleep apnea, people wake up kind of tired and fatigued. They don't wake up ready to face the day uh -huh. and that's just because they're not getting a deep enough sleep and and getting enough which means better oxygen perfusion uh -huh. you know throughout the whole brain uh -huh. because when we sleep what happens that's when that hormone melatonin is naturally released uh -huh. and that's during the night is helping in the production and the use of serotonin during the day